condemnation or the cleanup, the redemption process, that's all over. That's all over now. So in the process is focus all of our attention on Farrakhan because he already did been cleared by the, by heaven and all of the high priests now know on earth. So you're going to see them all kissing Farrakhan behind to just be close to him because he had already been declared righteous. You're going to see the ones that used to talk about him bad. Now they're going to be kissing his feet because you remember in the book it said, I'll make your enemies become your footstool. Watch they start kissing his behind. He won. They lost. He went first. He went first. It's all right there. You seeing it in real time when they're kicking him off Facebook. They don't they trying to keep y'all from knowing. But they're also trying to um they're trying to cause an effect because they don't want the misery no more either. Everybody on earth, even though oppressors are tired of it. And there's only one that can fix it. The monkey king. All of them is tired of it. All you got to do, and if you go to my page, you can see where I kept posting conscious white people, conscious white people. They sick of us suffering more than we sick of us suffering. They stepping up for us more than we stepping up for ourselves. Why? <laughs> they ain't white no more for one of y'all ain't know that. But the reason is, is because we accepted it in the beginning. And because we accepted our punishment, we accepted the oppression more than we should have. And we accepted it to the degree to make those that don't look like us that was responsible for the enforcement to not want, they can't take it no more. You know it's bad when the people with their foot on your neck can't take hold of their foot on your neck. They can't take it no more. They're tired of white privilege. They're tired of it. I mean, they want everybody to have the same privilege. And, th and, and that was part of um, the, the smoldering process, the melding process of tearing somebody down um, and rebuilding them back up to a position where they can't take that level of injustice. It was worse. Now, um, it's not that bad and they can't take it. These same people be, they're seeing it now. They couldn't have took it a hundred years ago. They'd have probably committed suicide. Now, and if you go back and you research all of the slave rebellions, this is important. Always started in the house. They never started in the field. Always started in the house. And nobody ain't never paid that no attention. So we calling people house niggas and we don't understand that the field niggas never set that shit off. The field niggas never set it off. But when the house nigga did, that was his strongest army. But the field nigga not going to set it off. It got to be one that's comfortable. That see that he don't want the rest of his brethren to be suffering while he living comfortable. This is easy. So he can't take it. So he speak with fire. They call it dragon fire. Or in Kim, we called it the hua, that authoritative utterance. Enough is enough. And we start coming out of the slumber. I've been seeing it. But I didn't think that people wanted the liberation, truthfully speaking, because they act like they don't like, they act like they like to be oppressed. They act like they like to be oppressed so much. How can you help somebody that think that this is this, this is correct? That it's cool for babies to be getting eaten. It's cool for them to be getting raped on a daily basis and sold into sex slavery at six, seven years of age. It's ignorance. And because I can go ahead and get a job that that's tricking people into thinking they're paying them, 
while they're still in the blind. I can do that, take care of my own, but I'm not supposed to care about anybody else. That's I can't do that. That's not in me. That's not how my mama raised me. She said, we can't throw people away like trash. That's how we got in this position, throwing people away like trash. Listen to the Nation of Islam description of how Yaqub's grafted devil came about and the conditions that they lived in, and you understand, they wasn't even the bad ones. The ones that made them. Them was the, the rotten motherfuckers. The ones that looked it like us that made them. It wasn't them. So the queen felt like they needed a chance. And so I can't go into too much into that until we get a little more into the judgment day scenario because um, the son of man has to rise from Orion. Orion, Michigan. The right hand of the mother, Mother Earth, is the state of Michigan made like the right hand mid. The only place in the state of Michigan where you have Orion three times is to match up with the pyramid complexes, Orion, Orion Township, and Lake Orion, Michigan. And the only place there where you had a love affair between the Scorpion King and the Leo, which is the Leo being the master with the lion's paw waking up the Scorpio from the seven stages of death and bringing them to the seven stages of light um, with the master grip to allow them to ascend and rebuild the rest of the temple. All this has to come the son of man now has to rise and orient and then it got to match all of the other prophecy scenarios. So the three kings would be the CEOs of Ford, Chrysler, and Jim marching their ass down there to pay them people that work for them what they owe them. Not nothing, not no extra shit, just what they owe them. They owe them a better deal than what they've given them. It's trying to, because you can't stifle the worker. The worker is the lifeblood of every community on this planet. Without the workers, nothing moves. Nothing moves without the worker, and that's what they all fail to um, fail to realize. Yep, seven thunders, Nate. And, and so, if 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 you understand the times, as Farrakhan say, you understand the signs, then you would know the agenda. The agenda is those we care about. Like, I genuinely love young Pharaoh. And I don't think he understand the um, history of his people to the degree where he can unravel the mystery of what's going on. And he is one of the major reasons why I did this video because I wanted to put those, have him study the materials that I'm putting up there, those four little old pamphlets, so that it can awaken something inside of him so he don't fall on the wrong side of the coin. He understand what the We Are Fair Kind movement is not about fair kinds doctrine that we agree or disagree with. It's about the fact that <clears throat> he already been judged. He was the first of the leadership judged from the most oppressed community. It go from the bottom to the top. Those who are oppressed the worst on the planet are the first to be given relief. And the most oppressed of all black people was the oppression of the black people in America. I'm using the regular everyday terms that we use. I'm not trying to be Moorish. I'm not trying to be um, 5% with it. I'm just trying to be 100. And everybody understand the basic term when they call us niggas and when they call us black, who they talking about, and when they call them white, who they talking about. So I'm using everyday language because that's what everyday people will understand best. Um, the goal now is to get the regular people to understand now without shocking them at the last minute with a massive turnout of people from various galaxies converging on the planet even though they come in peaceful people will panic and start the war so you see them getting y'all ready with all of these space movies over the last 40 years. Star Trek, Star Wars, um, Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, um, Alien, the Predator. 
they get you so used to seeing them so that when you finally do start seeing them, it won't catch you too far off guard. Um, well, who get the message through the ethers? Who you talking about? He who comes to the gravity, this happens indisputably. Depending on what you mean, he who comes to, comes to the gravity. Gravity is to be used. Gravity is a tool to help you align your chakras. Gravity is the weak force. It's not what keeps the planets in orbit or none of that. Gravity is a weak force. Gravity is used as an energetic grid or field in order to orient your spine for the proper effect. And that's what they mean by being upright, standing upright to the point where your energies flow freely up and down according to the poles of the planet. So that's why they say upright. That's what they mean. If you'd have seen the way people were before that in Europe, when the Babylonians threw all them babies away over there, um, you would understand why um, Leonardo was given that chart. That's body mechanics. They never tell you what it is. They're always putting it up there. Picture an old man with his arms stretched out to his side in two positions and his legs the same. That's body mechanics. That's the ancient symbol for biomechanics, the movement of the body. And it's also about the measurement and symmetry as in the Fibonacci sequence. When you go around and you got to get the body into symmetry. So if you look at the photograph of what was called white people from the early 1900s new to now, you'll see a drastic change in the physiology. And this is what it was all about, about um, the great melding pot, the one drop of blood. Now it's, a, it's about um, renting the veil, pulling, showing you the man behind the curtain. Finally, Dorothy finally made it down total to the end of the yellow brick road. And she in there talking to her, somebody got to pull that curtain down so she could see who it is. Well, I'm going to pull the curtain down. I'm going to pull the curtain down because it's no secret, but everybody can't see it. It's right there in all our face, but nobody can't see it. And so, um, this is the return of the black gods. Um, Empress Verdiasi. Um, Tierra Gostinel Bay wrote a book called The Return of the Ancient Ones. Y'all need to get this material and study it until it wakens you up. If you're one of us, it's going to wake you up. Even if you're a lesser one of us, what they call a demigod, it's going to wake you up. And you're going to know exactly where your level at. And you're going to know exactly how much you've been robbed and you're going to be pissed. So, um, when you read that material, the light body begins to wake up out of the slumber. And here, um, in the Wisdom of Solomon, it talks about the sleep. Well, in the Sumerian tablets, it calls it the spell of Kingu. That was the time matrix or the chronos effect anu did that's anu's doing anu is chronos he's the one in charge of stretching the time out and he did it by collapsing dimensions and that set somebody off and that's where you get all of your judgments taking place because um the war that was in heaven spilled onto the earth. It was a gender war. And from there, we end up here at the redemption, at the final closing of the age. So if the imam organizes his people properly um, and the minister allow him to do it, he should probably 
let them understand what, what the standard of review is in both Sharia law and in American jurisprudence. He could probably get an American attorney to explain it for American jurisprudence in layman's terms so the average person can know what the standard of review is. And then he can have a, a shape come in that can explain it if um, from a Sharia law's perspective, how you got to have something to compare it to. And this is how Farrakhan went first. This is how he got it. This is how he got to be declared righteous first because he went first for judgment. You got to remember, he'd already been judged. He didn't be judged. His life didn't be put under a microscope um, in heaven, and they said he was righteous. So even if he did do something that us as humans consider to be wrong, he did it with perfect intent and righteousness at heart. And he can't be held liable for trying to do the right thing even if it came out wrong. So if y'all think him calling the white man the devil was the wrong thing to do, his heart thought it was the right thing to do. So he had to say it. If he'd have said it out any other way, he'd have condemned himself because he wouldn't have believed in it and he'd have been perpetuating BS, basically. He would have been bullshitting people. So he had to say it because he believed it. If he believed in what Elijah Muhammad said, then he had to, that's what he had to say as a leader. How, how much he believed in his heart is according to how much he followed through with the path. He can have rooms of doubt. That's normal with a wise man. You got to know what the Proverbs say. He said, a wise man doubteth often, but the fool is obstinate and doubteth not. You got to remember these things because they're telling you how the judgment goes. So we think one thing, but reality is something else because we think in the way that the deceiver told us to think, deceived. And so, um, um, blue crane, keep flying on me. Look up the crane as a totem animal and then look up the color blue in relation to the crane. You look them up separately, then you look them up together, then you make up your own decision after that, Denny. Um, yeah, okay, that chain that we make, um, um, Chanel, that, that chain that we make, it's, this is a mental connection. It's called the hundred monkey effect. When you look up the hundred monkey effect, it's going to tell you about a Japanese experiment with some macaque monkeys, and that as soon as that 100 monkey, um, woke up, or became aware of this life-saving principle it affected them all from then on all of them automatically knew it without having to tell another one and that's where we are with it we're trying to establish what they call the hundred monkey effect now notice i told you it's related to the rise of the gorilla and it's related to the uh the um taming of the sako mile or the monkey man all that go back to uh, Hanuman. Now, Hanuman is known as um, a devotee of Lord Siva, the destroyer, and um, he's a, a prominent figure in a lot of Hindu mythology. But Hanuman came from China. Hanuman came from China um, because he was undefeated, but they wouldn't give him the three dragon emperors wouldn't give him the right to rule because of his psycho mile. So they sent him to the Buddha. That's how he ended up in India as Hanuman. The Buddha called him Hanuman. That's his holy name in, under the Buddha. So um, the holy name under the Buddha, he swore to teach me and once he learned. The only other person that you see in history, you see Prometheus, he um, swore to give man the fire of wisdom. And they punished you for it. And you see Thoth and Emerald Tablets. <sighs> he was the master of masters who taught them all to teach men. He was the teacher of men. Um, all this tied back in the Hanuman. Now how do this tie into um, the planet of the apes? 
Look at who wrote it and where it was written. It was written in Paris, France. And follow the interviews of the author. He said that it was the fear that when the black people take over the earth, of them destroying the white people. But if you really look at the movies, the movies go into even more detail. When they start updating the movies, they start giving you updated details that wasn't available in the series in the 70s. And then the King Kong and the Mighty Ojo Young, those are all part of the same scenario. And um, so the Planet X being written in France, the black metal structure called Eiffel Tower is a homonym, I fell, where they killed the, um, the Templar priest Jacques de Molay. And um, I hope I said his name right because I don't speak French. And the city is Par Isis or the city of Isis. They killed him there in search of what they call the Grail Blood, the Grail Kings. And they chased him all the way to North America following the Via Kings that y'all call Vikings. Vicarious kings on the high seas is what they were. They were Templars. And they were commissioned to protect the Holy Grail or the bloodline of the Grail Kings that came through Queen Scotta, uh, Ireland, and was to resurface here in the West. And it was supposed to tie to other bloodlines coming out of um, southeastern U.S., what we call Seminole bloodline, in order to produce the, because the Seminoles are, are direct um related to Africans in Africa and they was never supposed to sack the continent. That was in Lil doing behind Inky Back. That was a dirt ball a dirt ball dirt bag move and he did it um out of spite. And this is how we already knew what was gonna happen. So you had to create a contingency plan. If it happened it needed to come out this way. And so you had your story, your 400 years of oppression in the foreign land. If that's not a plan that's been already written, and I don't even know how to tell you how to understand what a plan is. Whether man wrote it or God wrote it, it's a plan. And God gave the plan to man about 400 years. So he told you how to read the signs. And if God told you how to read the signs, 